Hello. In this lesson, we're going to look at deriving expressions for indicated variables, practicing for the AP Physics 1 exam. We will look at transitioning between different concepts and learning how to express certain variables uh, accordingly. Remember to pause or rewind the video as you need to. <clears throat> Let's begin. <clears throat> Always take the time to try and list out any possible concepts that you can think of by not only looking at the image and the, the picture given, but le reading the prompt and then also reading any of the parts, the subsequent parts, uh, just to see if any additional changes are made in the problem that might introduce another concept. So let's begin with number one. Problem one. A block of mass M initially compressed a distance X is horizontally launched from an ideal linear spring with a force constant K on a smooth table. After it separates from the spring, it uh, collides elastically with an identical block of mass M. Derive an expression for the horizontal displacement from the edge of the block or the block in the right in terms of H, K, uh, X, M, and any fundamental constants. So this term here simply relates to G, okay, just so you know. Now, what concepts seem to come to mind? Well, I look at this right here and I see spring-loaded spring -loaded mass right here. That, to me, would indicate conservation of energy. Okay, and I'm going to abbreviate, the way I choose to abbreviate is uh, like this. So COE for me is just an abbreviation for conservation of energy. And that's going to be the spring-loaded part right here. Now, <clears throat> the mass is going to slide. And it's going to reach the end of the table where it's going to collide elastically. Okay, so what do we have there? Conservation of momentum. But now elastically is kind of a big thing because it's not just conservation of momentum, it's conservation of kinetic energy as well. Okay, so that's going to be, you know, kind of a big idea in terms of how we can transition in this question. So we've got conservation of energy with the spring loaded mass. We have conservation of momentum and conservation of kinetic energy with the collision. And then finally, the second mass, which is also M, is going to launch off the edge of the table. And so we have what is called a horizontally launched projectile or horizontal projectile motion. Keep in mind that this is a motion, all of, all of the AP Physics 1 questions are motion related. It's a motion related course, it's a mechanics course. And so the one variable that is going to link every one of these concepts is velocity. The velocity at the end of the energy problem becomes the velocity before collision. The velocity after collision becomes the, the initial velocity of the projectile off the edge of the table. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, take a look at this. Um, we are trying to derive an expression for the horizontal displacement from the edge of the table. You can call that delta x if you want to. We're looking at that distance there. Uh, you could call it d for you know distance if you want to. Um, since it didn't tell you what to name it, you get the freedom to kind of go ahead and select that variable. But you know, be consistent. Obviously, I'm going to go ahead and choose distance d. <clears throat> now. We're going to begin with a conservation of energy problem. So let's go ahead and begin with that. Conservation of energy begins with the idea that the initial total energy equals the final total energy. Well, initially, when you compress the spring, you start with spring potential energy, right? And then as the spring extends and, and the spring pushes on the block, when the, when the block leaves the spring, the, there is no more spring energy. All that spring energy has transformed into kinetic energy of the block. And so there's our equation for conservation of energy right here. Now what we do is we go ahead and we replace the different parts, the 
potential energy equation for a spring would be one half k times x squared equals the kinetic energy equation, which would be one half m b squared. <clears throat> okay. Now remember, what are we trying to solve for? We are trying to solve for velocity. Velocity is that one variable that links between the problems, right? Let's go ahead and solve for that. Multiplying by two gets rid of the mass. Let me go ahead and actually write it down here again. So one half kx squared equals one half mv squared. We'll multiply by two and the half is gone. We'll divide by mass, okay? And then finally, you'll go ahead and square root. So velocity before collision is equal to k times x squared over the mass. Quite honestly, it's okay if you leave it like this, but you could choose to take out the square root of x squared, which is um, v equals x, times uh, the square root of k over m. So you could do either one, either one is fine. Now, since kinetic energy is conserved in this elastic collision and they're the same identical mass, it means velocity equals velocity. The velocity of this mass before collision equals the velocity of the second block after collision. So, This becomes the launch velocity of the second mass after collision. Okay. Now, if you need to see a conservation of momentum equation, then go ahead. Conservation of momentum would tell you momentum before the collision equals momentum after the collision, which would be what? The only thing moving before the collision is mass m, and it's moving with speed v. So mv is the speed before collision. And that's going to equal what? Well, after collision, all you have is mass m moving at the exact same speed v. Since the mass is canceled, you can see the speeds are equal. So there's not necessarily a need for this equation because it's really more conceptual than anything else. But if you need the equation there to kind of prove it to yourself, then you know, by all means. Now, the next part is the horizontal projectile motion. Okay, And with this, we need two different directions. So in the, in the uh, vertical direction, right, we have h is equal to one half gt squared. Now, if you're not sure where we're getting this, I'm using the uh, second equation listed on the uh, AP exam equation sheet. It's uh, position as a function of time. So x equals x naught plus vx naught t plus one half a sub x t squared. I'm translating all these into vertical variables, okay, because we're talking about vertical motion here, right? So this would become y equals y naught plus v naught y times t, and then plus a would become minus one half g t squared. Well, examining it a closer look, a horizontally launched projectile is gonna land on the ground, that would be zero. The original position would be the height where you're dropping it from. Your initial velocity in the y direction is zero because you're horizontally launching it, and so what you end up with is you end up with zero equals h minus one half g t squared. Adding this over here, we get h is one half g t squared. So it is helpful to know uh, how to get these equations, but honestly, if you are able to memorize them, that works too. The horizontal direction is kind of what we're looking for. And that would be x, or in this case, d, we said we we're gonna use d equals v naught x times t. If you remember, there is no acceleration in the horizontal direction. Therefore, you're looking at a constant speed equation. The distance is just the constant velocity times time. All right.
So let's go ahead and solve this for time. You're going to multiply by 2, divide by g, and then square root. So time is equal to the square root of 2 times h over g. So distance would equal, you're going to substitute for two things. We're going to substitute for v naught x, okay, right there, or, or there, doesn't matter which one. Okay, so I'm going to choose the first one, k squared of kx squared over m. And then you have to substitute for t, okay, which is the square root of 2h over g. So you just have to make two substitutions. So the dis horizontal displacement is going to be the square root of, and we've got to put that all together on the top there, 2khx squared over mg. Now, you can leave it like that if you want to. I'm going to go ahead and pop out an x there. Um, distance equals x times the square root of 2kh over mg. If the blocks are stuck together with the horizontal displacement increase, decrease, or stay the same. So horizontal displacement is based upon velocity and time. So if the blocks stick together, the velocity after collision would be less. Therefore, the horizontal displacement will decrease. If the experiment were repeated with a spring, with a spring force of force constant 4k, by what factor will the horizontal displacement um, from the edge of the table change? So here we do. We start with the actual expression that we came up with. D is equal to x times the square root of 2kh uh, over mg. Now, the only thing that changed is k. The only thing that actually changed is k. Everything else stayed the same. So ultimately what that does, if everything else stays the same, I would replace every other variable with the number one. What that essentially tells us, if the only thing that's changing is k, that means displacement is directly proportional to the square root of k. And that's what we're doing here. So the displacement is going to be um, not equal to, but proportional to the square root of 4, 4k four means 4 times more, uh, which is 2, which means if k is 4 times greater, then d is twice as far, increases by a factor of 2.